The driving question for this video is how can we tell if a change is a chemical change or a physical change? So what we would like to do is to come up with some daily life examples and we can tell and learn between these two changes okay, from, uh, from these examples. So on your left right here we have a list of change a list of examples from our daily life. We have boiling water, which you can see in uh, in uh, in the kitchen. We have evaporation of water. Uh, when you have a glass of water, just sit on the table, and you come back maybe a few hours or a few days, you can see water disappearing. We have burning of firewood, okay, especially during winter time. We have the rusting of iron, okay. If you have some kind of uh, equipment made of iron, then you may see this. And last, we have dissolving salt in water, okay, as an example. So next, what we would like to do is to learn the definitions of the physical change and chemical change, so that we know how to tell, how to identify these changes on these examples. So first, we have physical change. The main thing about physical change is whatever it changes, whatever the change is, it still retains its original identity. Okay? For example, if you have a piece of paper and you fold it, so after you fold the paper, it changes its shape, but it is still a piece of paper. Okay? So that's considered a change in shape, or it could change between the state of matter. Okay, for example, if you melt ice to become water, it is still chemically H2O. So in this case, we don't see a change in its own identity. We see the retention of its own identity. There's no change uh, on, the, uh, on the chemical makeup. Okay, so, and now let's look at the chemical change. Well, for chemical change, it involves a chemical reaction that takes place and it produces a new substance during the reaction. Okay, at least a new substance could be more. So how can we tell okay, if there's a chemical reaction taking place? Because from our naked eyes we cannot see molecules or we cannot see uh, molecules or compounds reacting. Okay, so what can we use as evidence to tell that there's a chemical change uh, going on. So here you see the four bullet points right here. Okay, so these are the uh, evidence that you can use to tell, to help you tell that there's a chemical reaction. So we have odor, we have color, we have bubbles, we have temperature. Okay, so these are some hints or evidence to help you tell that, well, there's a chemical change. Okay. So it's more easier to uh, it's easier to tell a chemical change because you can make use of your senses, uh, and you can uh, uh, make use of a, make use of your senses and tell if there's a chemical reaction happening right away. So let's first start off with the uh, chemical change. Okay, on the examples here. So if you look at the list right here from the top to the bottom, the first chemical change that you should be able to tell is the burning of firewood because if, even with your eyes closed you can smell the distinctive smell odor from from the fire from the burning of firewood okay if you don't burn it you don't really smell anything different but if you burn it there's a very very strong smell that you can tell right away that something is burning Okay, and if you look closer to the burn to the firewood, okay, let's say it cools down. So you touch the firewood, and you you your finger will be black. Okay, so it doesn't it did not happen before it burned, but it but the black stuff stains your hand after it's burning. Okay, something that's quite different compared to the. The, the firewood before burning. So that's another great evidence to tell that there is a chemical change. Okay, and one other evidence you can tell is well the burning process itself it releases a lot of amount, a huge amount of heat. Okay, that's why we burn it during winter time. So the amount of heat is actually coming from the burning of the fire, firewood, the process itself. Okay, so that's going to be another great evidence 
to confirm that there is a chemical change. Okay, as we move down, okay, the rusting of iron, okay, is it a chemical change or a physical change? Well, the color itself, it's going to give you a very big hint that, well, there is a chemical change, okay, because originally silver looks kind of like silverish color, okay, shiny, but after it rusts, the color changes to brownish color and it, it, doesn't sh it doesn't look as shiny as it was as a piece of pure elemental iron. So the color itself is the great evidence to tell, to confirm that there's a chemical change, okay? Uh, especially when it is uh, exposed uh, to the atmosphere, okay? Because the iron itself reacts with the oxygen in the air to become the brownish colored compound, okay? Now, I'm going to leave the dissolving salt in water at the very last because uh, it takes a little bit more time to explain. So, what about the first two, the boiling water, the evaporation water? Well, these two examples are very similar because it involves the change of state of water, okay? Now, you may wonder, you may question me saying like, well, how do you know that there is no change in the identity, okay? It disappeared, so it could change to something else. Well, that's a very good question, okay? So what we can do here is that, well, we know about condensation, right? We learned it from middle school. So what we can do is, let's say we know that water is evaporating or boring. So what we can do is to put some kind of maybe a plate, okay, or some kind of cool surface to let the steam or water vapor to, uh, to condense. And we collect those liquid, okay? Let's not say they're water because we don't know yet, okay? Let's say we collect those liquid, okay, the, from the condensation. And what we can do here is that, well, let's not taste it yet, although it is, although we may assume it's water, but let's say it's not water, we don't know what it is, it's not safe to taste it. So, yeah, what we can do after collecting those liquid is that we can put it into the freezer, okay? Let's say we put it at about like zero degrees Celsius, zero degrees Celsius or negative one degree Celsius to just to see if it freezes like water, okay? And what we realize is that, well, it does, it does freeze into, to become ice, okay? And what we can do, what, what else we can do here is that, well, if you have some very advanced equipment in, in, a, in, a, in a science lab, so what we can do here is put the liquid into a electrolysis equipment. So what we're doing is to actually split the liquid with electricity. And what we, what we will realize is that re we have the, uh, we collect, we see gases collecting in the two electrodes, and they are the oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. How do we know? Well, a process called burning splint test, which is you have some kind of wood splint, okay, you, keep, uh, you burn it on fire, okay, you have some little flame at the tip of the splint, and then you put it into the uh, test tube that collects the, uh, the, the gases. So what happened is that if you put the burning splint in a test tube and it keeps on burning and it burns more vigorously, then it is showing that it is oxygen because the burning process requires oxygen, okay? So that's a way to tell if something is oxygen. Now, in the case of hydrogen, what we can do is also the burning splint test, but the behavior of this test is going to be different from the oxygen case. What we will expect to see if it is a hydrogen is that it creates a pop sound. Well, why is a pop sound? The reason is the, the prop, one of the properties of hydrogen is that it is very explosive. Okay, it can be self-exploding. So when you put your burning splint, burning splint into a test tube, and and what happened is the energy itself provides enough uh, uh, the, 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 the heat from the burning splint 
provi provides enough energy for the hydrogen to have this little explosion which which creates this pop sound okay so so this is how we can tell that the boiling water the evaporation water is actually a physical change because afterwards it is still H2O okay so now let's go to the very last example the dissolving of salt in water what kind of change is it because it's kind of like a mystery because when you put salt into water you stir a little bit the salt disappears okay so what kind of change is this okay you may wonder why is it a chemical change it looks kind of different it disappears okay but somehow if you well since it's salt okay we know it's safe you taste the salt water it's salty it's kind of like salt so you have these two sides battling each other and you have to find evidence to show which change is this okay so what kind of evidence can we use so what we can assume okay we have two scenarios one we put something in water there's no chemical reaction okay so it is still water and salt no new substances or scenario number two which is well there's a chemical reaction something that is new being created so which one is which so we let, we will go for the easy way to find out what it is so that we can save our effort okay and we can still tell the answer so what we can do is to go with the scenario number one that's our assumption that it is still salt and water so if one if, if we want to tell that it is just a chemical uh, a physical change what can we do okay if we want just to prove that it is a physical change what can we do so what we can do is to well if they mix together separate them okay let's try to separate the salt from the water now you may ask how they are mixed together I don't even see salt in water well that's true okay they don't you don't see any salt in water anymore but if we have a way to just get the water out from the solution then we can tell if it is a physical change or not well one thing that we can use is to uh, make use of the boiling point of these two substances for water we know that the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius for salt it is not going to boil until a very 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 high temperature that is not typical is typically not achievable at home or in science lab so what we can do is to apply heat to the solution and let's just boil the water assuming that it's just a mixture and what we can tell afterwards is that well after all the water after all the liquid is being boiled away what is left at the bottom of the container is some white solid that looks just like the salt and what we can do with the salt is that well, what we can do with the solid is that well let's just taste a little bit okay because well, we pretty know we, we pretty much know the answer already. So we just need to confirm it. So if you taste it, it tastes just like the salt from the original container, which is the but uh, like before you mix the uh, water. So this is an example to show how we can tell a mixture from uh, a well. How we, we can tell that if some solid being dissolved in the solution or solvent. And we can tell it is still a physical change not a chemical change all right so after all these i hope you understand the differences between physical change and chemical change the very core cool question to ask is does the substance change its identity is there any new substance being formed in the process okay so now after you learn all these i'm going to give you a question to think about okay the question is well you may have you may do this in your chemistry class so the question is I'm gonna give you a setup the setup is this you have a beaker of acid and you're gonna put a tiny like 
this piece, uh, this uh, a piece of magnesium ribbon with this length into the acid. Okay, and you're going to make some observation, and I'm going to give you the observation. Okay, the observation is this: you begin to see bubbles on top on the surface of the magnesium strip. After a while, you start to see the magnesium disappearing. Okay. It's kind of like it's just getting shorter, shorter, and shorter. And after like half an hour, it is completely gone. All right. And then you come up with a method to collect the gases, okay, in the, uh, from the uh, from the from the from the change, okay. So what you can do is you kind of you put the uh, you fill the test tube with acid. You put the magnesium ribbon into the uh, test tube, and and then the the gases produced from the uh, uh, in the process and change is collected at the top of the test tube, okay? Because it's sealed, uh, because we inverted the test tube, it's going to collect all the gases. All right. Now we're going to apply the same burning splint test. You put the burning splint into the test tube after you collect all the gases. Is it produces a pop sound? Okay. And then, say you still wonder about if it is a chemical change or a physical change, what you do next is to boil the solution, to remove the liquid, okay, and see what's remaining at the end. And after all your work, okay, after you, you heat up the, the solution, you, you, uh, you boil the, uh, the, the liquid away, and what you see at the bottom of the container it's some white solid. So, what kind of change is this? Okay, you can look up the answer in the uh, description of the video. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.